How's everybody doing this morning? Super. I guess today everybody's under the weather, huh? <laughs> when I begged Brian if I could preach, I mean, <laughs> did I say that? Uh, years ago, maybe not too long ago, but in the last year or so, I heard that the Gettysburg Address was only 272 words. <coughs> and I thought about what an incredible speech that was, or address. It was, there were remarks, really. And how impactful they were. President Lincoln presented 272 words over about three minutes, probably somewhere between two and three minutes. And it still resonates with us today. And so I always had this idea running in the back of my head. Wouldn't it be nice to preach a 272-word sermon? And God's people said, yeah. um, Actually, I thought, you know, it, it might be nice to have a preaching festival where the preachers only had 272 words. You can get up there and speak 272 words. So now, what I did was I came up with a 272 word sermon. And this is what I would say to you, you know, if someone says, why should I be rooted in the word of God? I came up with 272 words. And it takes longer to write a short sermon than it does to write a long sermon. You have to scrutinize every word, whether it fits, whether it's needed or not. So I came up with a 272 word sermon. And then I said, can I do another 272 word sermon using only scripture? And I came up with a 272 word uh, sermon using only scripture. So the first sermon there, there are no, no slides, no notes. If you want to go ahead and put 272 blanks in there and fill them up, that's okay. When, when I get to my second sermon, uh, we'll have slides with that. We'll show you the scripture and how many words. But before I begin, Brother Ron Maxwell is going to share with us the Gettysburg Address. Bobby, just, I was just thinking, this is roughly a month ago, a little over a month ago, I started this beard, so God does have a plan. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have, thus far, so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave their last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, 
shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. And now the man will play awake my soul. This is a hello. This has no hello? Hello. Okay. This is a new song as well, so we're gonna be singing this at the end. So sing with us and pay attention. continents in three languages, over 1,500 years by roughly 40 authors. One of its authors was the wisest man in the world. Another, just a simple fisherman. Yet, from the beginning to end is this unifying theme. God created you. He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants you to love Him. When you grow, go astray, He sent a Savior to rescue you. He loves you so much that He sent Jesus, His only begotten Son. Get rooted in the Word so that you will know the plans that God has for you. A 
plan to save you, a plan to give you a hope and a future. When you plant yourself in the Word and grow roots there, you come to know Jesus in how salvation is found in no one else. The Old Testament records epic battles among the nations. In the New Testament, there are primarily three. The religious leaders versus Jesus, the religious leaders versus his followers, and the biggest battle of them all, waged over the souls of men, women, and children, Satan against the world. When you read your Bible, you will discover that this spiritual battle actually emerged from the very beginning in the garden, Genesis chapter 3. Sadly, this battle continues today. But God has not abandoned us. Deep in the pages of your Bible, in the book of Revelation, there is a message of hope. Good triumphs over evil. We win. Amen. Jesus wins. Read your Bible. Be rooted in God's Word. So that's the first 272 word sermon. In 150 years, I imagine this congregation will be talking about the Parkview Address. <laughs> Ron, thank you so much. I appreciate you doing that. Uh, now, kind of an interesting side note. Uh, I had my sermon ready yesterday, and I made some changes at the last minute. And I noticed that the sermon I printed out was from yesterday and didn't have the changes. Dean, I'm sorry I had to go print all of the slides that you're going to see. So here it is. It's 10.39, brothers and sisters. How are we doing on time? <laughs> All right, here's the second sermon. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Your word is truth. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. From infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. We will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. You are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Scripture cannot be broken. 